why would I do that? That's what I was wondering. Why would you do that? I, I... Like a party or like dinner or something? I don't know. I thought you were no, planned no, the evening. No, I meant to like arrest no, you. Course, I'll arrest strange. you later again. Take it easy. Jim. Okay. Hi, Ty. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, congratulations on winning the 11 Second Club. This is fantastic. Um, my name is Robin Powell. I'm working as, a, as an animator at DreamWorks, um, and I've also worked at Blue Sky. So I've worked on a variety of movies from Ice Age, Horton Hears a Who, uh, to Madagascar, Dragons, and most recently, Abominable. Um, but uh, I get the opportunity to uh, critique your 11 Second Club the winning film so I'm super excited about that and I took a look and it's awesome I love the characterizations that you've got and it's very appealing and you've got a really nice weight and life to it so let's just go through and yeah it's very very entertaining um, you've got a lot of appeal as well really nice clear silhouettes very easily read yeah, this is fantastic. So I have a few thoughts here on some things that you can push to just take your animation to the next level. So one of the overall feelings that I was getting was uh, there's a lot of things that tend to start and stop at the same time. It'd be really great to sort of offset those to give it a little bit more texture. So for example, when we're coming through here, if we watch like his body and the hands come down at the same time and then they sort of stop at the same time. And same thing on this guy. See if we watch when he is... Oh, sorry, it's on the next shot there. Actually, I can go through here with the gun. So you see how the gun and the hand come up at the same... The hand comes up to scratch the head, and the gun goes down at the same time. And on some areas like here, where both the hands and the body, and the hands are going at the same time, same height, and things like that. So if we could break that up, I think that'll add a really nice uh, texture to it. And this as well, see how the gun and the hand come through. Even though you've got a little bit of drag there on the gun, it'd be great to push it just a little bit further to get uh, just a little bit more asymmetry in there. I think that would really help push that to the next level. So for example, let's just talk about this beginning part here. Um, so actually, I'll find something a little bit clearer. We'll go on to this one. Yeah, the gun here. So maybe it might be uh, something to try, worth trying, is just to maybe hold the gun there and get the hand up a little bit sooner before the gun starts to drop and what you can do is even though it won't it won't change your um the amount of time you spend on it is maybe speeding up one a little bit more so that kind of saves you a little bit so even if you wanted to hold the hand the hand there and he starts to drop the gun maybe the hand just delays a little bit and then in order to get the hand up there you can just speed it up a little bit sooner so it saves you those couple of frames and then you don't have to uh worry about extending it or whatnot um now let's see now what you can do as well is right in there when his hand comes up is maybe it comes up a little bit faster and then comes up more into a little bit of an antic where his hands up like this and then as you you can drop it down into this where he starts scratching his head so it's a little bit more I don't have the right timing in there but it, comes up a little bit faster into an antic and then drops down and then starts scratching his head. So it gives you a chance to kind of read a little bit more of doing this rather than just coming up already into that pose. Um, so you can get a little bit of drag on that hand and then scratching his head. And let's see. So same thing here. If you see like his body's coming up and then the hands are dropping at the same time. So maybe there's some ways that we can offset that a little bit. So maybe the hand starts to drop a little bit sooner. And rather than having it come straight down off his head holding this pose, maybe instead we can have it drag with a little bit more weight. So maybe it kind of leads a little bit more like this. So you're sort of dragging that hand down and then come into that pose into this and then same thing with this hands coming over maybe we can uh, just vary the timing a little bit more so maybe it's a little bit faster and a tighter ease in so it's not quite as even so that'll give it a little bit more weight and especially because you've got this great motion of the fingers opening up here so maybe it kind of pulls it over like that so it's a little bit faster through this transition and then weights it's more weighted once the fingers open up like this so you feel that sense of impact so it makes it a little bit more punchy and then on something like this right where his hands come up do you see how they're both coming up at the same time and they're both turning i mean it's great you've got the asymmetry here where one's a little bit lower one's a little bit higher but once we get into this they're both doing sort of the same thing and the same timing 
coming down. So if we can break that up, so maybe one comes up a little bit sooner and is just maybe one frame ahead of the other hand, and maybe it drops a little bit farther. So even though you'll have the same amount of frames, this one will be dropping a little bit faster because it's got a bigger distance to move. And then if it's offset by one, even if it gets one more in there than the other hand, it kind of helps vary things up a little bit so you're not doing this. Uh, that always really helps too. And then on something like this with these brows, you've got these really cool brows in there. I thought those are awesome. See how they kind of rise up and then he hits here and drops. Maybe we can have them come up a little bit sooner ease into this position and then he holds that as he's dropping because right now they feel a little bit like they're kind of pinned in space as he's dropping so they're staying in the same position as he's going down so maybe if you ease them in a little bit tighter sooner they're already in that position as he's dropping and then you get that sense of overlapping weight so once he comes down here this too drop them a little bit faster ease in tighter on there and you'll feel like when he's dropping those brows come down and it'll give it that sense of weight and same thing on the hands. If you take a look at these two hands here, just watch out for areas like this where the fingers are dropping at the same time and the head's dropping at the same time as well. So everything's kind of coming down like that. So if there's anything you can do to offset that, that would be great. Now I did see on, let me see if it was on this section or, no, it must have been back here. Hold on here. I took a sneak peek of this. Maybe it was on this. Yes, it was on here. So if we take a look just at his chest right in here, if you notice when you've got the rotation, so he seems to rotate here. And this is after he's looked over, and then he rotates a little bit more right there. It feels like his chest is kind of delayed, so it feels a little bit disconnected from the head. So if we can connect those two, and it doesn't mean that they have to be moving at the same time. In fact, that's something we do want to avoid. We want to make sure we've got a good sense of body mechanics in there. So, uh, so it's either being driven by the head, so the head's turning and then the shoulders move, or the shoulders moving and then it brings the head with it. But to make that connection a little bit more. So I would suggest right here that maybe Maybe the head leads, but right about here, you start rotating the chest a little bit sooner, tighten into that, and then already the head's starting to move back. So I wouldn't continue to rotate the chest counterclockwise. I would start to rotate it back a little bit sooner as well, so it feels a little bit more connected. Now let's go to here. Now there's a few things as far as the dialogue, which I thought maybe we could push that a little bit further. Now I know uh, you're not picking up the dialogue, I think, or the audio on this, but I am, so. So there's a few areas where I'm thinking it'd be great to uh, punch it up just a little bit. So find the strongest accent. So he says, why wouldn't, why would I do that? That maybe the word that make it a little bit bigger and a little bit snappier. So we're not kind of floating through it, but it adds a little bit more emphasis on that and makes it like right in that one. Because that's clearly the biggest one. So maybe we can drop that mouth a little bit more. Maybe not as big as I drew there, but you get the idea. See, even on that, why would you do that? It feels like, why would you do that? It feels like there's an accent in there that we can kind of punch that up a little bit. And even like uh, party, because he does end up party. There, that's the party part. And it feels kind of just as big as some of those other words in there. So maybe we can add something in there. So now we talk about this shot right in here. So like I said, I love how you've got the delay in the gun coming up because it does add, gives it that sense of weight in there. One of the things to really emphasize something because they're both coming up at the same time. So both hands are coming up like this. Whenever you want to sort of draw attention to something, I would either bring that up sooner because uh, whenever you have movement, that's where the eye is going to go to. But if you have two things moving at the same time at the same rate, uh, it splits the viewer's eye on what they're supposed to be focusing on. So if you want the gun to come up and then even if this is delayed, you know, his point is delayed by a couple frames, three frames or something like that would add a little bit more punchiness to it or start to bring this hand up and then this one. So as long as they're not coming up at the same time, slowing down and stopping at the same rate, uh, it'd be great to just emphasize that a little bit more. 
And on top of that, because his head is coming over too. So right in here, see how the head and both hands are coming up at the same time. So uh, break those things up and figure out where you want the emphasis to be and kind of get there. Give the viewer a chance to look at it. And you can use those other things like the head tilting into it in the hand as reinforcing where you're supposed to look. So again, it doesn't have to be that the gun comes up first. Maybe it comes up last or whatever, but I wouldn't have them competing with the head and the two hands as well. And the ending there, that's really funny. I love that. I love the cartooniness that you've got in this of just zipping them out. I think that's working great. I think one of the things you can do here, if you really want to emphasize that, so you've got his hand right here, right? And then we're going to yank him out of there. So what I would do is I would actually maybe antic this one up because we're bringing his body down like this. Maybe we can bring the hand up and zip it out like this. But then when you get to this point, what you want to do is make, make sure you're describing the arc. Whenever you have a fast movement, you can get away with a lot of fast movement. We've got motion blur in there. But to really emphasize that is uh, to create an arc that the viewer's eye can follow. So when you think of things like um, uh, Looney Tunes, because they get away with really not just bending the rules, but breaking them. So they'll have something go super, super fast. I mean, beyond comprehension about how fast it can, can be, but they describe it by using arcs. So you can follow arcs. If an arc is described um, by the shape of frames that you do see, the viewer's eye will fill in the blanks. So I was using this as an example in my class, was I had a shot actually that had uh, a balloon. So we had a balloon like this and the balloon was let go. So it's got to go really, really fast. So what I did was I described, I figured out the path that I wanted it to go on. Um, and it's something like this. Now, if I have the balloon following like this, it's starting to describe the path that it's going to go on. So if I have the next frame like this, the viewer can fill in this gap. But if I have the next shape of the balloon right here, this is too big of a gap because uh, I haven't described that it's going to be curving around. So this is going to look like the balloon just snapped over onto that other side. So I would have to describe that. What I would do, let's delete that, is I would bring this one down a little bit to help describe that it's going to be curving around. And then same thing on this. So I would stretch this a little bit so I'm able to describe and get the viewer to follow what's happening. So that's how you can use uh, really big stretches and wipes to make something read, but you really have to use it to describe the curve and the arc that's on. So in this case, if you have, because you could even have uh, like an opposite direction. So if the hand was here and then, you know, you snap the hand out, so it pops out and then he drags it out. Just figure out what path you want it to go on and you can scale it, you know, stretch this hand like this and then just have it snap right out. So if I take off onion skinning and it's a really quick movement, but so something like that could be really cartoony, but you want to definitely use the curve or the arcs to describe it and you can get away with murder pretty much this kind of thing. That's the beauty of animation, right? Yeah, I love the details you have on even things like the overlap on the fingers and stuff like that. See, all of that stuff's working great. What I would suggest though, take those things and push them a little bit further. So things like the fingers that you've got going on, even those going like this. So if they're just sort of floating down, then they stop. Uh, it won't feel as organic as if you really kind of favor in, ease in and ease out to give it a sense of weight. So take a look at your spacing on there, and it's a tiny little tweak. It's really just a matter of pulling out those tangent handles on your curves to get it to kind of ease in and ease out of uh, those positions, and even maybe just a slight overshoot and come up. So it keeps them a bit alive, because you've really got a lot of life in yours. So you don't want anything freezing. So. Yeah, and just for things even like the brows and stuff like that. So you see how the brows are coming up is you can like get a little more inflection on that, a little bit more punch on it just by tweaking your timing and your spacing a little bit. But otherwise, I mean, this is a fantastic shot. I really love it. I think you did a great job on it. So um, I wish you all the best of luck and I hope you have a lot of fun as you start off on your animation career. All right. Bye.